Hey guys, it's just me for this video, kind of because this is talking about creative stuff um, and that's in my category and kind of because Hugh is super busy with his business at the moment. So yes, we do YouTube, but we do other things as well. We're trying to do YouTube a lot more and Hugh's business relates to YouTube, but at the moment it's um, growing rapidly. So he's very, very busy. So I thought I would do this video. I have a regular segment on radio here on TBS EFM, Real Mum Real Talk, and recently I did an episode giving tips on how to have an environment so your children can be creative and how to encourage them to be creative. So I thought this is something that I could talk about on our YouTube channel, especially as lately I've been doing these collab videos with our son Yule, who is almost two, like next week he is two where he does a painting and I finish the painting so it's a collaboration and then it usually becomes a nice painting in the end so you can check out those videos on our channel. But I realized a lot of parents want their children to be really creative and they want to encourage them but they don't always know what is the best way to do that. So I'm going to give some real real life tips in this video. So I'm an artist and I work as an artist both in digital uh, doing cartooning and then traditional art as well. My parents are not artists though but they raised uh, me and my siblings in a very creative home. My parents weren't artists in that sense but they were creative in their own ways. So even if a parent doesn't feel like they are that creative themselves or you know they feel like they can't paint and draw really well it doesn't mean that they can't encourage their children to do that. I also want to stress that it's never too late to learn how to draw and paint and do other creative things yourself. This is not something that has to just be innate talent. There's lots of things that you can learn to do. So if you wish that you had been raised in a more creative home and you wish you could draw and paint and do these things, it is never too late. I think one of the important things about creating the right environment for kids to be creative is that you're fostering lifelong skills for them. So firstly, creativity is really important. Encouraging your child to draw and paint doesn't mean that they have to be an artist later. It's not something you have to push them into, but those artistic skills, those creative skills are going to help them in so many different professions. So helping them have a good creative base is really gonna help them later in life. But regardless of you know thoughts about or what jobs my kids are gonna have later, you don't even need to think about that, just Giving them an environment where they can do things like drawing and painting is going to be a stress reliever for them. And kids are so stressed these days with their schedules and this and all this pressure. So if you can provide something that is unstructured play for them, where they can be creative, you are going to, sorry, paintbrush, you are going to take some of that stress away from them. But I understand why this can feel really overwhelming for parents. Parents already have so much stress about everything. And then, oh, now there's this stress. My kid's got to be creative. My kid's got to do this. It doesn't need to be stressed like that. So let me know if you've had this experience. So many parents will try like maybe once a week, once a month to do something creative with their kids. So they'll get, you know, the crayons out, the pencils out, the paints out, hoping it's going to be this lovely experience for their children. And then the kids get all the paints. They mix all the paints together. They make a big brown mess. They have a canvas or piece of paper that is just a big brown mess and they probably knock over the, the water in the process. All the parents want to do this like fun craft activity with them and the kids are not into it that much and it ends up just being this stressful experience for everybody. Let me know in the comments if you've had this type of experience. Also many parents might be stressed about the mess that these projects make and the kids being messy and that stress is transmitted to the kids and the kids pick up on that and that will affect the kids behavior. So I really have to stress that things like drawing and painting can't be just taught in the same way or encouraged in the same way that something like maths or science can be. And you don't want to be telling your kids exactly what they should be doing. I do have a story about this. So we live in Seoul, South Korea, for those that don't know. And we were at a cafe a few years ago and there was a girl there with her parents. And she was probably about five or six and she had some paints uh, set up in this cafe. At first I thought it was really lovely to see a child being creative in public like that, but I was watching and there was already 
a drawing, like so it was already the outline and she had to colour in and the father was sitting there like very close and then directing her exactly what colour she should get and where she should put it, put it for every single move. So she had no like control over even her movements because every single thing was dictated to her and I mean the picture looked great it looked very technical but she wasn't being creative it was no different from doing a math problem where you have to do something exactly like this and this is the way that you do it and this is the answer it wasn't being creative at all and that just made me really sad so I do really want to stress to parents about if you really want your kids to be creative you really have to let go I'm giving my experience from growing up in a creative home and things that my mom has told me about how she raised us and my own experience of living through it, as well as what I do with my almost two year old now. So I feel my my son is very creative and you can see on, on videos, his concentration and he draws every single day. So I'm going to give some real tips that I hope you can use if this is something that you want to do, if you want your kids to be more creative. So the first one is that kids should have access to art supplies at all times. So I hope nobody is gasping in horror at that because I know parents immediately think, oh no, drawing on the walls and that type of thing. But my two year old has access to crayons at all times. And when a kid is old enough, they should have access to paints. When they're old enough to be responsible, they should be able to access paint. It shouldn't be this weekly or fortnightly or monthly thing where mommy gets the paints out and then sets it up and this is the only time that they're allowed to paint. If they want to paint, they should be able to go and do it. So the drawing on the walls or drawing on the furniture thing is a real concern for parents, I know. And my son occasionally tries to do that. And I don't scold him, I just redirect him. So he is almost two. So he's still very much very young, toddler, doesn't say that much yet. But he already knows that walls he's not supposed to draw on. Doesn't mean that he won't do it, like he will be very cheeky looking when he does it, but he knows that drawing is for his sketchbooks. And I want to show you how many sketchbooks I have for him. This is probably just the last few months. This is how many he has. So you can see here. So this is really important. You need to be giving them materials to draw on. They're not going to be drawing on the walls that much. When they have a million sketchbooks, big sketchbooks, and you can get different textures as well, have this provided for them. So this is my son's latest one. I think this was daddy doing some stuff here. But all these, this is his new one, so this has got blank pages, but every other single one is absolutely full of his drawings and you can see his style change you can see the different ways that he was he went through a phase where he drew really like tight uh, little shapes like that and he will draw every single day and he has so many of these sometimes he comes back and will redo a page like that so that's fine also for painting He's been doing some painting in this one here. So I just wanted to emphasize just how much I actually provide for him like that. He always has these accessible. Art should be a part of life. It shouldn't be something that you just do occasionally, you know, one time a month or one time a week or something like that. Now, if your child is doing some painting, don't stress about the mess. Hovering over a child and cleaning up every spill as it happens is not giving them a good environment to be creative. It gives them the idea that what they're doing is wrong and it is devaluing art. Just prepare for the mess. So put down plastic or paper, put them in old clothes or a paint smock. Just do your best to avoid the mess when you set up and then let them be free and let them be creative. Of course, if they knock over all the water and it's going everywhere, clean it up in the moment. But if they have a bit of mess on them, they have a little bit of mess around, wait until they're finished before you clean that up. Really don't hover over them because that is transmitting anxiety to them and it's not going to be fun for them. The next tip is to don't buy the cheapest art supplies if you can afford better. This is a mistake I have seen many many times. 
Now I'm not talking about parents who are in a difficult financial situation and they can only afford very cheap art supplies. I'm not talking about them. They have to do what they can do. I mean parents who clearly can afford better art supplies and are buying expensive toys for their children but when their child is like, mommy or daddy, I want to paint, they will buy the cheapest, just a few dollars, watercolor set. I'll put it on the screen. You have probably seen it in your lifetime before. This is the worst type of paint. It comes with one little crappy brush that really does not do much. And the, paint's, the paint is not good quality. And there's only a limit to how much the kid can paint and what they can do. And then put that with like a very cheap piece of paper it is not a good environment for a kid and they're going to get discouraged so quickly. The other problem is the message that it's giving to your child. You are giving them the message that art is not that important, that art we just, you know, we don't want to spend money on that. We'll spend hundreds of dollars on these new fancy toys, but for paints, for crayons, we are not spending money on that. That is a really negative message to give to children in a world where already art is devalued, like in schools, you know, they cut the art, they cut the music programs, kids are forced into doing the right subjects and, and that type of thing, when what is the world without art and music? Um, so I think encouraging children to place value on art is important from a young age. This doesn't mean that you have to buy professional level paints for your kids. You can, you can if you want to, especially as they get older. But I think there is a middle ground of reasonably priced art supplies. And just think of it in, in regards to how much you're spending on other things. It might not actually seem that expensive when you think of all the other ways that you're spending money on your kids. You want to give them art supplies that make them feel nice when they're using it. So maybe you know what I'm talking about, the feel of a nice paintbrush the feel of smooth, good quality paint going onto a canvas. For example, I always give my toddler a lot of different paint brushes, a lot of different, some of them are right here actually. So we have like big ones like this, we have medium ones, and we have, see the different shapes, the different ends of it like this. So here's a variety to work with when he paints. I mentioned the big brown mess before that kids tend to do, and I do have a way to deal with that. I think it's good to happen at least once. I think it's a learning experience for kids because I feel like I remember this from my own childhood when you see all these beautiful colors and you're like, I'm going to make the best color ever. I'm going to mix all these colors together and it's going to be this wonderful, wonderful color. And then you do that, you mix it all together and you get brown. The best way to deal with this for kids that are young or just starting out is to only put a few colors out and put colors out that are not going to just turn brown when they're mixed together. So you could put out some white and you could put out some blue and some yellow and some green because then even if the blue and the yellow are mixed together, it's still going to be green. So there's going to be color on the canvas. And then as they you know get a bit better, you can add more colors. Um, I think parents really want to, you know, here's all the colors, paint with all the colors, and then, then you have the brown situation. The problem with the brown situation is the kids actually don't see, like, the flow of the painting, the lines, the shapes that they've drawn, because it just becomes this, just, brownness. The other thing to do is to switch out the paper or the canvas as the kid is doing it. I think a lot of times kids still want to keep painting, and so they keep painting, and it just becomes this soggy brown mess because they weren't given any more material to work on. So just give them the opportunity to switch out to another canvas, to another piece of paper, and then you're going to get a painting that looks a lot more like a painting that they can be proud of, something that looks really creative, and then they can move on and they can see that it doesn't have to just be one picture. They can keep working, keep working for as long as they want to. My next tip is to tell them how wonderful their art is. Lots of encouragement, lots of compliments. Display it proudly. Maybe you can do a collab painting as well, the same way that I do with my son. For us, that's a record of our creativity. It doesn't mean that you have to keep every single artwork that your kid does, of course, but do display them for long periods of time and tell them how wonderful their artwork is. If you haven't seen the other videos on our channel, I will show you some of the artworks that I have done with my son. So, this one here is a bunny rabbit in grass. So my son did all that stuff there and I painted the bunny rabbit there. This one, he felt like using a lot of the red and the green, so I did a nice rose here, 
Um, I like having a combination of his sort of very freestyle and then I do the more meticulous work here. This is one where I used his colouring and sort of the shape to then create this landscape like this with the waterfall like that and I still have a lot of the elements like if you see the picture the picture before I did anything on it you'll see how that shaped what I did there. This is our very first collab one that we did so he painted a lot of blue so this is what I mean that I only put like a few colours out for him. He painted this blue which was very sea like so then I added added this stuff down here but still took he did lots of um the strokes here so the coral and the seaweed and this type of coral is all starting from what he actually did so talking about switching out canvases and paint quite quickly this is one that he did on his own it didn't take him very long i think it goes this way um so this is a really lovely abstract piece that he did and because he, see it's, it's almost got the brownness to it because this was after he'd already done other painting but he, it's got all this little colour, this nice colour in it like that and so I haven't done anything with this one because I think this is great how it is. Another tip is you can encourage other types of art besides just drawing and painting. Another way to foster creativity is to have something that we always called the useful box. I think that was from the TV show Play School, but what it was was a box, big box, usually with a lid, like it can be a big wooden box, and you have useful things in it. So what I mean is when me and my siblings thought, I want to make this, I want to do this, I want to create something, we could go to this box and we could pull out some art supplies. It was a combination of bought materials, so you can have like construction paper, like pipe cleaners, googly eyes, with stuff from the home, like otherwise like mum would be throwing out or recycling. So other boxes and plastic containers, those type of things. Also make sure they've got things like scissors and glue depending on, on their age. Also allow your kids to use a hot glue gun as soon as you think they are ready. <laughs> a hot glue gun is so good for creating things. Collecting things that come off presents or ribbons and paper bags as well is all stuff that you can just put into the useful box. I think I remember my mum, like when there'd be something in the kitchen, like a margarine container or something, and she'd be like, do you want this in the useful box? And we'd be like, yes. Okay, so I have heard some concerns from parents whose child really did love drawing, but then other kids in the school were much better naturally at drawing than them. And it became a competition and then they felt bad about their drawings and they gave it up. This happens a lot because some kids are just naturally gifted at painting and drawing and can be miles ahead of other kids their age. And kids can be really competitive and mean to each other. Don't let your child give up, don't let them be discouraged. Talk to them about sometimes we do have to practice a lot and we do have to try really hard at something before we can get better. Kids also tend to focus just on drawing because that's the most accessible thing that's given to them. They don't always have access to paint but you know pencils and paper they always do so kids can get really really good at meticulous drawing and then they judge each other by that. You can help in this situation by giving your kids other craft materials or like, like I said paints other things like that so they can express themselves creatively and feel good about what they're creating. They might find that they can make awesome paintings or they might be able to make really cool things out of cardboard boxes and you're also showing that art is not just you know meticulously drawing something. Also a lot of people are very good at that type of meticulous drawing but they have a lot of trouble putting colour onto a canvas. Don't let your child be discouraged because there's so many different ways that they can express themselves through art. So maybe just switch it up for them and keep encouraging them and explaining that sometimes we do have to try for a long time before we're satisfied with the results. Also take them to art galleries where they can see all different types of art. I was one of those kids that was naturally gifted at drawing and painting from a young age but I was also a very shy kid so it wasn't something that I boast about other people would be like yeah yeah she's the one that's really good at drawing a new family moved to the town when I was probably about 11 or 12 um, and it was some event whether it was a church event or like a home event or something but they were being welcomed into the community and the, one of the sons was my age and it came up somehow like oh Nicola or Nikki as I was known I was really good at drawing she's the best drawer you know 
other kids would be saying that and this boy turned to me and says well now you're the second best drawer because I'm the best drawer <laughs> I don't think it upset me that much I just thought it was a bit bizarre this competition like that and then in the end it turned out yeah he was really good at like cartooning stuff but he couldn't do the traditional art that I could do so like I didn't lose my place as like the best the best in the class so maybe talk to your children about how that can be a little bit ridiculous sometimes that type of competitive nature I was a very shy kid that didn't want to draw attention to myself but if a kid is very talented at drawing and then is a little bit obnoxious and outspoken then I can see how that can be a bit overwhelming and competitive for other kids that generally do love drawing but they don't have the same technical skills yet. My next tip is to understand and accept that to have a creative environment for your kids, things are going to get a little bit messy or a lot messy. We live in a small apartment in Seoul. And like I said, my son has access to art supplies at all times. So things are messy most of the time here, but it's worth it when I see how much my son loves drawing and painting. In fact, his daycare teachers said that after the other kids, you know, when they're doing their activity, they're doing drawing or painting, the other kids, you know run off and play but he is still there doing it because he's really enjoying what he's doing if you're planning on having kids and you want to have a creative environment or you're moving to a new home and you have the opportunity you know technology is so great now there's the type of paint that if the kid does draw on the wall or paint on the wall it comes off really easy so just think about maybe mess proofing your home in that way so you can maybe have a little bit of control over some of the mess I don't just do traditional art I do digital art as well so if your child is expressing an interest in that that is definitely something to encourage them in as well uh, there is always a range of tablets that are targeted at like beginners or kids that are not too expensive you don't need to be you know buying them the three thousand dollar Syntec tablet or that type of thing if you can you know you can uh, but there are definitely the type of tablets where you're looking at the screen but you're drawing here um, they only take a little bit of time to get used to, but that's a really good way for kids to start. And there's various programs that they can use as well. As somebody that grew up doing traditional art and then had to learn some digital art as well, I do recommend that kids do both. If they only want to do digital art, that's fine. You know, that's the way the future is going anyway, but I still think there's value in doing traditional art and knowing the feel of a paintbrush in your hand because even though like the pens for digital art they're very sensitive to pressure and you know it's all done like it's very receptive to how you want the thing to be there's still so many shortcuts of like you can fix the line like this easily you can make it like this I do think there's value in kids drawing or painting and they've done something wrong and it takes a lot of time to fix it they have to paint over it or they have to start again i think there's benefits to that type of learning how to do art i think it helps with the digital art as well it helps to know what the paint looks like on a textured canvas or paper it helps to know the feel of things and it helps to know like how long it can take doing digital art it helps if they know how long traditional art can take and then when they're doing digital art they can appreciate things like Oh, the undo button, which you can't do on canvas. Funny story, after I had been doing digital art for a lot longer and I hadn't been doing traditional art for a while, I went back to do some painting and I made a mistake and I just instinctively tried to do control Z, control Z if you're American, to <laughs> undo. And then I was like, oh, it's not the computer. I can't do it like that. I do also want to say like digital art takes a lot of skill as well. Like I'm not even very good at digital art. So I don't think it's just like, oh, the computers are doing everything. It's not that digital artists are extremely talented. Um, I just think it's great to encourage both types of art. I also mentioned before that if you are an adult and you feel like you missed out on being raised in a creative environment or being given the opportunities to learn how to paint, it is never too late like I think my my Nana started learning a lot later in life as well and she can paint some nice paintings now so definitely check out courses or just start doing it yourself 
I am thinking of developing an online course for beginners that shows the most simple and easy way how to paint and then gives people a base to then you know decide what style they, they want to go with um, because I think I have a lot of techniques that are really great for beginners and I have experience teaching as well um, and I think that's a really great base for people that also gives them the encouragement and motivation and the confidence to then create amazing thank you paintbrushes, create amazing artworks themselves. I hope this helped parents uh, to think about how they can encourage their kids to be more creative. If you've got some more tips then like leave them down below as well. I can always do a follow-up video later or I can answer some of your questions as well. If you would like to subscribe to us if you haven't already and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about our new videos. There'll be more painting collab videos with my toddler coming soon as well. That is an ongoing series so make, your, make sure you're subscribed so you can see those ones and all the other stuff we do about being an intercultural family, life in Korea, being Australian Korean, all that type of stuff. Follow the social media and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.